Here is the countdown. 10. 2014 Outbreak As of August 6, 2014, the World Health Organization claimed that 932 people had died of Ebola so far in the summer of 2014. In a world of billions, this number may seem statistically insignificant, but it is important to realize that tiny rural communities have been hit especially hard. How do we stop the deadliest Ebola outbreak in history? Let's start with this. We're in the middle of the worst Ebola outbreak in history. It's a global health emergency. But how did it get this far? I'm Dina and here's what you need to know about what it's going to take to stop Ebola. Ebola is a virus usually found in tropical regions. It was first discovered in 1976 near the Ebola River in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Scientists think it comes from fruit bats and among people it's spread through contact with bodily fluids. Most Ebola patients die and there is no cure. The current outbreak is the largest ever and the first in West Africa. It began in Guinea in March and is spreading fast. And because Ebola is new to the region, there's a lot of misinformation out there. That's delaying treatment and giving the disease more time to spread. And unlike before, this outbreak is affecting densely populated urban areas. So if there's no cure, what's it going to take to contain this epidemic? A lot of help from the rest of the world. Nine. Arrival in America When news of the 2014 Ebola outbreak first broke, those in the West listened warily but without great concern. After all, Ebola had sprung up intermittently for over 30 years without causing significant damage. But when it was announced that an infected American, Dr. Kent Brantley, would be transported back to the United States, panic ensued. Recognizing a juicy story, the media only made matters worse. 8. Discovery the first recorded outbreaks of Ebola occurred around the same time in 1976 in Zaire now the Democratic Republic of the Congo and also in Sudan. When people began dying of a mystery ailment, William Close, the personal physician of Zaire President Mobutu Sisi Siko, sent for a team of experts from Belgium's Institute of Tropical Medicine. Their research focused on the village of Yambuku, where the first known case infected Mabolo Lakala, the headmaster of the village school, and quickly spread to other people in the village. The Belgian team decided to call the virus Ebola after the nearby Ebola River rather than stigmatize Yambuku. 7. Porton Down Lab Accident Conspiracy theorists love to spin tall tales of secret government research laboratories where deadly biological agents are cultivated and monsters are bred, but unlike many crackpot theories, this one contains a grain of truth. One such facility is the Center for Applied Microbiology Research at Porton Down in England, where Ebola research is carried out. The Level 4 Safety Category Laboratory is outfitted with a shower system to sterilize researchers before they exit in bulletproof glass to ensure the virus is kept securely under wraps. Should an accident happen, such as a tear in a suit or glove, an alarm will sound. As of September 18th, there were over 5,300 cases of Ebola in West Africa and more than 2,600 deaths. Last month, the WHO estimated that we could see 20,000 people infected before this is all over. In a worst case scenario, according to an estimate by the CDC, 1.4 million people in Liberia and Sierra Leone alone could end up with the disease. So how did we get here and why is this outbreak so hard to contain? Well, it doesn't actually have that much to do with the disease itself. Yes, Ebola is contagious, and yes, there is no cure. But that has always been the case with Ebola, and other outbreaks haven't been nearly this widespread, because other outbreaks haven't happened in this part of West Africa. 6. Sexual transmission. The first 7 to 10 days after they begin showing symptoms is critical to the survival of Ebola patients. This is when most Ebola victims die. But if the body manufactures enough antibodies to fight off the virus, recovery is possible. Even after a clean blood test, though, Ebola can linger in strange ways, such as in the breast milk of lactating women. It also stays in semen for up to three months, as blood-borne antibodies don't reach the testicles, so men who recover from Ebola are told to practice safe sex with condoms. Seminal fluid taken from the researcher from Porton Down contained the virus 61 days after his recovery. 5. Effect on wildlife. Viruses that quickly kill their victims naturally fill us with terror, but these are hardly the most insidious. Death within a manner of days is scary, but it is a terribly ineffective way to spread a disease. 
Fast-acting viruses like Ebola have historically burned themselves out quickly and close to their original source, whereas viruses that manifest slowly, such as HIV AIDS, have spread across the globe. Scientists believe that the reason Ebola keeps managing to pop up is that the virus has found a reservoir in the bat population of Central and Western Africa, in the same way that bats have become the vector for rabies in other parts of the world. The fruit bats, which are asymptomatic, transmit the disease to animals like the diker, a small antelope, and primates like chimpanzees and gorillas. 4. How Ebola Kills Although the plague thus far appears localized, hospitals the world over are on high alert for the symptoms of Ebola. Unfortunately, symptoms of the early stages of the virus are so common that they are frequently ignored or misdiagnosed. The initial symptoms are quite like a cold or flu, headache, exhaustion, body aches, fever, sore throat, etc. Usually, these kinds of things might portend an ugly few days but are unlikely to send anyone scrambling for the nearest emergency room. Death itself comes from various complications, including seizures, organ failure, and low blood pressure. There are several factors involved in determining the mortality rate, including the specific strain of the virus. The death rate of the 2014 outbreak hovered just above 60% as of August. 3. Vaccine. In the past, Ebola spread from its animal hosts, typically infecting a handful of people in rural areas before fizzling out. While frightening and great fodder for thrillers like 1995's Outbreak, whose plot revolves around a fictional form of the disease, it didn't arouse a great deal of concern in the West. Developing a cure or vaccine has not historically been a financially viable option for pharmaceutical companies, since there would be no profit in it. Stopping Ebola is all about containing it. There is no cure, but the disease runs its course relatively quickly. So if you can identify the infected and maintain a well-resourced medical quarantine, you can get the outbreak under control. A plan that works in places like Uganda, which has a history with Ebola, an informed public, and a medical system capable of identifying and quarantining the disease. Uganda had an outbreak in 2012 that only affected 24 people and ran its course in less than four months. West Africa doesn't have any of these advantages. It is an extremely poor part of the world with a high illiteracy rate and poor medical resources. According to some reports, they spend less than $100 per year per citizen on health. As such, informing the general public about the disease is difficult, and equipping the medical community to fight it has been almost impossible. Something as basic as rubber gloves isn't a guarantee in many medical facilities. 2. Transmission the precise mechanisms of the transmission of Ebola are unknown. Most experts agree that it can only be passed among humans through the exchange of bodily fluids, though there is some discussion that it may be spread aerobically from pigs to other species. At first glance, it seems easy to insulate oneself from such a virus, even for primary caregivers, by limiting the transfer of fluids. 1. Treatment. In the past, treatment of the Ebola virus was practically non-existent. Sufferers were only given palliative care, including liquids and electrolytes to keep them hydrated, painkillers like ibuprofen to bring down fevers, and antibiotics to temper any other complications and keep the immune system strong enough to focus on fighting the virus. The rest was largely up to the individual's own constitution and which strain had sickened them. However, the American victims, Kent Brantley and Nancy Reitbull, have received some experimental medicine. Brantley was treated early on with a blood transfusion from a 14-year-old boy he had treated who had recovered from the virus. They were also administered a serum pioneered by San Diego's MAP Biopharmaceutical derived from the antibodies of animals exposed to Ebola.